Welcome back to Grace Space. Again, we're meeting in a different place. Uh, this is our elementary, so we get to hang out. This is our grades one to five. We're living our best lives. This time, we're not in my home. We're in a different MySpace. This is the office area. This isn't my office, because my office is a little small. But that's okay. So, we've been talking about this thing for like all of March. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but March is five Sundays long. Like that's, that's a pretty long, it's a pretty long time. So we've been talking about a certain topic. I'm sure you're like, hey, Pastor Shay, I know you talk about it so much. Starts with a four, ends with a giveness. That's right, we're talking about forgiveness. Last week, we talked about when you forgive others, you show them that you love them. So we talked about the prodigal son. I think you might know a bit about him. He went, spent all the money that his father had, and his father came and accepted him back and just loved him. And we can also learn that we can love others that way. So this week's story comes from the Bible. If you got a Bible, I would grab it because that's an important thing to do. And it's the best way that we can learn. Like this is our, this is God's gift to us. Like this is how we can connect with God besides prayer and learning more. Bible is so good to read. If you can't read, ask a parent or a family member to read for you or read to you. It's pretty great. All right, so we're gonna open it up to dun, 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 Matthew 19. Well, I'm wrong. 19, Matthew 18. Here we go. All right, 21 to 35. The story is called The Unforgiving Servant. All right, so you got your Bible. I got my Bible. Let's do this. So we have our friend Peter. You guys have heard about Peter before. He was one of Jesus' disciples. And one day he came up to Jesus and he asked him, Jesus, how many times should I forgive my, like, my brother or sister how, who sins against me? Seven times? Now, I don't know about you guys, but seven times seems pretty, like, a pretty small number. I feel like I need to be forgiven seven times in one day. But this is, this is what Jesus said to him. I mean, what do you guys think, Jesus? Did he say, yeah, seven times is good? Nah. He said, I tell you not seven times, but seven, seven times, 70 times. What Jesus was saying here is there's no limit to how much we forgive others. So some versions say the seven, 77 times or seven times, 70 times, just a lot is what Jesus was saying. So I did the math and maybe you did too. It comes up to 490 times. So the gist of it is Jesus is basically saying, just keep forgiving. Like there is no limit. He's saying to forgive a lot. And to make this clear, he told us a story. Now this is the story of the unforgiving servant. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle the money owed by his servants. All right, so we have a king. So obviously we're doing hats. That's our new thing in grace space. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hats. So we have a king and one of his servants comes and he's asking people to pay back the debt. So the money they owed him, he's like, I would like my money back, please. So this guy comes and guess how much he owed the king? Like millions of dollars. It says like 10,000 bags of gold. That's probably, I feel like, I feel like this is enough. This could be probably like 10 of these. That's a lot. That's a lot of gold. So he, he owed the king 10,000 bags of gold. It's wild. And, but the guy asked, he begged the king. He said, I, I need you to be patient. I can't pay it back. And the king was like, well, if you can't pay it back, then uh, I'm going to send you, your wife, and your kids to jail. And you're, I'm going to sell you guys, and you're going to be servants. And, like, that would be horrible. He couldn't pay back the money, so he had to, he had to beg. He was like, well, he didn't want his family to be sold. That would be absolutely horrible. So he begged him to be patient with him, saying he would pay back every cent. That's a lot of cents. Like, that's, that's a lot of money. So guess what the king did? What do you think the king did? He didn't, he didn't sell his family. He didn't send him to jail. He got rid of the servant's debt. Every single cent. That's like, that's like a million dollars today. That's so much money. And he had pity for the man that he would just, he didn't have to pay any of it. So 
how would you feel as the servant if you had to owe someone so much money? You would feel pretty good, hey? You would probably want to help others out because you were helped out. But that's not the case here. The servant, now, the servant wasn't a, I don't know if I would say he's a great guy. Like, he must have felt pretty happy. I would feel, ooh, confetti. I would feel pretty happy if my debt was paid. So, instead of loving others and being kind to others, just like the king was kind to him, he turned around, he went straight to another servant's house, knocked on his door, and he said, hey, you owe me a thousand gold. I need it right now. That's like a court, like maybe 1.1% of the money that he owed the king. And he ordered this guy, like he like picked him up. Like he was very rough with him and demanding that the servant pay him back the few thousand he owed him. That's pretty rude. He was forgiven his debt, but he didn't forgive the small debt someone had towards him. So it says this in the Bible, his fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, just like he begged the king, be patient with me and I'll pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown in prison. Huh? Like he got so, here we go, he got so mad that he threw the guy into prison and he was, he was just not a, that wasn't great. So when the other servants saw what happened, the people around him, they were outraged. I feel like I would be pretty outraged too. And went and told their king, their king, everything that had happened. And the other servant begged him just like the first servant did to the king, but he had no mercy or kindness to forgive his fellow servant. Just straight up rude, like so mean. How do you think the king felt when he found out what happened with the servant that he forgave such a big debt? He was so upset. He probably, honestly, he wasn't scared. He wasn't happy. He would be, there we go. He was mad. He was so mad. So this, again, in the Bible, it says, I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his the king handed him over to the jailers to be tortured Ooh. until he should pay back all he owed. So the king gave the servant back all that debt. He said, all that debt that you owe me, you have to pay it back. Jesus said to have, he wants us to have forgive, to forgive those who have gone against us because we have been forgiven by God. And it would make him so sad that we do not forgive others. Just like the servant didn't forgive the other servant, God wants us to forgive those who sin against us or have maybe have done things that aren't that great to us. Okay, so I want you to get up. I'm not going to get up, but I want you to get up and we're going to say this together because I don't want to get out of the, the shot thing. So forgive others because you have been forgiven. Can you say it? Beautiful. I could hear you all the way over here. So what would this look like in our world today? Maybe you lost one of your mom's earrings and she forgave you, but then your sister broke a toy of yours and you forgive, you absolutely refused to forgive her. In fact, you made her buy you a new one with her own birthday money. What? That could be, yay, yay, yay. Or maybe you missed the winning shot in your basketball game, but your team was nice to you anyways. The next week, another player on your team took the last shot before the buzzer and missed, and you were so mad. You got that emotion again. So mad. You couldn't let it go. Jesus told this story for a reason. The king who forgave all the money is like God, our heavenly father. He always forgives us, even when we mess up big time. That's why we should forgive others as we have been forgiven. Can you say it with me? Forgive others as we have been forgiven. So we all mess up, but God has forgiven us. And because he forgives, when someone asks you for forgiveness, what should we do? Should we forgive them? Yeah, you knew that. I know you're smart. You got that. We should forgive, just like the king in the story. Just as God has forgiven you and me and even our parents. So you and I should forgive because we have been forgiven. So turn, maybe... After this, go run to your parents and say, 
I forgive others because I've been forgiven. Go tell someone that. It's so important. So let's get into another important thing about our lessons that teach us that teaches us the great things about like you know in our bible the great things about forgiveness we have been talking about this all month it should be burned into your brains by now and into your hearts we always know this it's colossians 3 13 can you say it with me colossians 3 13 give me those threes i know you got them all right so the verse this is our memory verse point to your head because this is your memory bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgave you. So we talked about this last week, bear, like it doesn't mean to act like an actual animal bear, it doesn't mean that. It means to put up with one another and to let stuff go easily without being mad or frustrated. Remember we talked about some emotions? How about that really big word grievance? Can you give me big, give me big word grievance. We talked about this before when we've met together and it means a problem or when someone hurts you or makes you mad. So what does this verse say about how God wants to forgive us? He wants us to forgive like he forgives us. All right, so we're gonna play a little bit of a game. We got our forgiveness up in here. We've done this a few times. We got the dice. I need you to stand up on your feet. We're gonna say this verse together. Whatever the dice lands on is what is how we're gonna say it. Okay. So we got one, we're gonna do a hung out. Two, we're gonna stretch our cheeks. And three, we'll do it upside down. Four, we're gonna do it like we're underwater. And if we get five, we're gonna act like we're squishing grapes. Number six, we'll do it without moving a hand. That sounds kind of funny. All right, ready? Are you ready? What do you think the number is gonna be? Call it out. We got one. Okay, tongue out, we'll say it together. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgave you. <laughs> okay, one more time so we have it right in our brain and right in our heart. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. What number do you think it is? Six. We're going to do it without moving our tongue. All right, we got this. Okay. You got this? Your tongue? It's not going to move. Bear <laughs> each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance <laughs> against someone. Forgive as the Lord has forgave you. Colossians 3.13 <laughs> I feel like we won't be forgetting this. This is going to be a fun game and we'll do it as our weeks come. Alright, now Let's talk about some questions. I got some questions for you. I'm gonna challenge you a bit on this. We're gonna talk more about forgiveness and about our story. So, why do we forgive? What do you think? Why, why do you think we forgive? Because the person deserves it? Because they ask us to? No, the reason why we forgive is we forgive others because we have been forgiven, right? You got that. Like I said, you're super smart. Okay. Why do you think the servant refused to forgive after he had just been forgiven? Now, I don't really know what that would have been. Maybe he just felt really high and mighty and like his ego was puffed up and he felt free. I don't, I'm not too sure. What do you think? Why do you think he did that? Another question for you. Why do you think it's hard for you to forgive? Even knowing that God forgives you every time you do something wrong. Now, sometimes it's hard because Maybe we just have so many emotions because we're mad. Maybe we're just really sad that someone had hurt us so badly that we just don't know if we can forgive them. So why does it sometimes feel easier to stay mad when someone does or says something that hurts us? That's that's called keeping a grudge. If we, if we keep a grudge for so long, why is it so much easier to keep that instead of talking to someone? If we do choose to stay mad, what might happen? Now, there's a lot of scenarios. We might keep those emotions in and then they burst out and maybe at someone who you're not actually even mad at. So that's why we want to forgive others because God wants us to forgive others so we don't keep it and it doesn't weigh us down, right? Because God loves us and he wants us to forgive as we have been forgiven. So how, how does knowing that God forgives you every time help you choose to forgive others 
when you'd rather stay mad or want to get even. Now, for me, I know that God has forgiven me. I know I have to remind myself a lot that God loves everyone and God loves those, even those who are against me and who might not be that great in my life. But how does knowing that God forgives you every time help you choose to forgive others? Because I know I don't do great things all the time either, but I know that God loves me and he wants me to show that love to others by forgiving them. All right, I'm going to pause this video super quick after I give you this instruction. I want you to go find a pen and a paper. Okay, uh, pause. Welcome back. Okay, so you have your paper, you have maybe a pen, pencil, marker. Now what I want you to do is I want you to write down maybe a time that this week or this weekend that you done something wrong or hurt someone, something that you need forgiveness for. So I want you to write it down, maybe tear a piece off your paper so you just have a little bit. Write that down. Okay, now I want you to crumple it up and we're going to pray and ask God for forgiveness for it. Okay, sound good? Okay. God, I thank you that you forgive us all the time. Lord, you know what we need to be forgiven for. Thank you for your love. Please forgive us in your name. Amen. Okay. Now I want you to tear up another piece of paper, and I want you to write something that someone has done against you. So maybe they hurt you. Maybe they were mean to you. Maybe something happened that way, and you need to forgive them. So I want you to write that down. I want you to crumple it up. Put it in your hand. And let's pray and ask God to help us to forgive others. Lord God, I thank you so much for your love for us. God, I pray that you are helping. Will you please help us forgive those who have done wrong against us? Thank you for your love and that we can love others this way. In your name, amen. Awesome. It's not easy. It's really not easy to forgive. But it gets easier when we remember something really important. And we've been talking about this this whole time. We forgive because God forgave us first. When we mess up and tell God we're sorry, like we did, he will forgive us, always. And because, and because of that, we should give forgiveness to others too. Isn't that crazy? So, I want you to say it with me. Forgive others because you have been forgiven. Can you say it? Forgive others because you have been forgiven. All right. We definitely can't do, for, we can't give forgiveness on our own. Like, it's really hard to do sometimes. So, I want you to think about that thing we just did with the paper. And know that you can pray to God and you can ask him to help you to forgive others. And you can say sorry to him and ask him to forgive you when you do things that aren't super great. So, God loves you. You are loved. I'm so happy that we have been able to have this time together. And... We will have our last lesson on forgiveness set next week, and we will see you then. Bye, guys.